Use case three, sort of chronologically downstream from that. After uh, here, different client now, but uh, healthcare benefits enrollment. Again, as employees, you know, we fill out forms uh, once a year during open enrollment, or, you know, when we have uh, some uh, significant qualifying event, our, our client in this case uh, manages that process, enrollment act, handling that enrollment activity, onboarding new employees, terminating existing employees, handling qualifying events when your family size changes, all of those, you know, result in people filling out forms to change their healthcare coverage, right? So uh, this data solution sort of acts as the intermediary between that form that we fill out as employees and the actual insurance provider, right? We fill out a form, that form gets converted at somehow coded into an 834, uh, an EDI 834 formatted message. Hopefully that means something to some of our, my audience today. That's the standard for uh, healthcare benefits uh, enrollment uh, transactions, right? So our data pipeline uh, needs to take EDI 834 messages. Uh, and first thing is just validate them. You know, are they syntactically correct? Do they, are they internally consistent? If they're not, then we're not even going to process them. We'll return them and say, well, this form's filled out incorrectly. Uh, if it's, if it passes that first stage, then we can actually process it, compare it compare the change request against the current record for that employee, uh, use that to build a, uh, an official request to dispatch to the insurance company to, to, um, to actually process that, that uh, benefits change. And then we wanna create audit reports of everything that we do so that we can see, uh, the client can see what reports were rejected, what reports were accepted, and of the reports that are requests that were, were accepted and of those requests, which ones were, what fields were actually changed, right? So a couple of snapshots into various parts of this particular case. This is the very beginning, right? E A34 messages come in. The first thing we need to do is really just check them to see if they're even worthy of being processed, right? So we grab them off of a message queue, uh, we validate them, uh, and then we put them on a different queue. If they pass validation and, and really uh, are valid and can be processed, we'll put them on one message queue. If they're not, if there's something wrong with the way the forms were filled out, uh, we can put them on a separate queue, which a different process can pick up and, and sort of send back to say, this form was not you know, filled out correctly, right? If I dig in a little bit here to the invalid message processing, uh, let me click there. First thing we gotta do is, is actually parse the 834 message. Again, here's our design tool, uh, parsing uh, a complex 834 message into its individual segments, uh, which we can then pick the bits out and write into an XML document that is uh, much easier to, to deal with, right? Um, if we find an error in the way an 834 message was sent to us, uh, we need to, you know, say this is an invalid request. Uh, so we put that message back on this other queue, but we also enrich it with Hey, uh, you know this is this, you know this is who I am. I'm the I'm the person running the pipeline, uh, and I found at you know at this date and time I rejected this this message, and here's why. So we're adding this metadata uh, to the message, uh, merging it into the stream, and, and writing it back to another queue. So this queue contains the original A34 message plus some reasons for what, when, and why we rejected that message. If it passes, and, and most of them do, right? This is just sort of a front gate. Uh, we have a valid 834 message that we need to actually compare against, you know, for a particular employee that we need to compare against what we already know about that employee and build a, essentially a change file, right? Another Clover graph. Again, just to give you a taste of, of what these pipelines can look like in complexity, all these yellow boxes across the top are taking the incoming request, comparing it to what we already know about the employee. He's on the gold plan, he's got uh, a wife and two kids, and this is the request he's making. Um, we run through a whole series. You can see uh, uh, 25, rule 25, 27, lots of different rules here that get processed in sequence to say, you know, are we adding a, is he adding a, a, 
uh, dependent? And if so, is that dependent under 26? And is there a primary care physician set for it? Or is that required? All of those steps that need to be processed uh, to make sure that this is going to be an acceptable uh, benefits change. Uh, and the artifacts that come out of this uh, are often change files, XSLT in this case, that can then be applied, uh, uh, provided to the insurance company as to say, hey, this client's uh, uh, policy has changed in the following, or request for benefits has changed in the following way. It's a very detailed pipeline here for managing, uh, automating the management of these uh, benefits change uh, requests. 